In this video, I'm going to address a topic that every orchid grower is aware of, excited about, and so we should be. But I want to point a few things out when too much of a good thing can have negative consequences. So, can too many roots on an orchid cause secondary issues that affect the overall health of the orchid? Have you ever wondered if the massive, vigorous root system of your orchid could pose a threat to your orchid? Is there even such a thing as an orchid growing too many roots? And if this is something you would like to explore with me, let's talk about it and see if, when, and why too many roots may not always be a good thing and what we need to do in those cases. Thank you so much for your interest, for being here on the other side of the intro. Your time is appreciated. Now, an orchid having too many roots posing a threat to the orchid. Crazy thought, huh? Seeing as we are, or we are supposed to be all about cultivating healthy root systems on our orchids because so much depends on the root system that makes the rest of the orchid growing hobby so satisfying, one could determine that there is no such thing as too many roots. I will explain and I will also address the concept of the orchid needs to be pot bound needs a small pot to grow well and similar culture recommendations to explain where that is coming from with a big but for reasons which I will get to. Well, if you have not thought about this before, then please take a moment to think through your collection as we dive a little deeper. Maybe something I will point out will resonate with you and might I add, while I grow my orchids in inorganic media within a semi-hydroponic setup, this has no bearing on what issues too many roots may pose. With the exception of mounted orchids, of course, the difference of the culture of orchids in the pot the media choice, etc. The same issues of too many roots causing issues are a possibility. So first of all, we hear a lot about the need to repot orchids every year, two years or three years because of media breaking down and the climate of the pot becoming too acidic, depending on how wet the media has to stay to accommodate the culture requirement of our orchids. In the case of growing in inorganic media, the need for repotting becomes obsolete, seeing as inorganic media doesn't break down. Why then repot on the same schedule as is the case with organic media? Well, eventually, there are too many roots in the pot. That is, if all goes well, of course, there will be too many roots in the pot, so a repot is a must. While in organic media culture, we want to refresh the media, with inorganic media, we have to deal with a pot-bound orchid, not for the media's sake, but because we need to bring back the gas exchange within the pot for the roots that are in the pot. And guess what we all do when it comes to repotting? We trim away dead roots. If we have a pot-bound orchid, chances are not all the roots are alive anymore, and in both cases, the decaying of the dead matter starts to change the health of the environment around the viable roots. Dead roots, while they get flattened out, and if our flushing regime is on point, much of the bacteria gets flushed out, but bad bacteria have an incredible way of multiplying really fast. So if you're flushing once a week or once a month, you can imagine that the population of the bacteria feeding on the decaying tissue is not going to be reduced for very long. Now, while there are good bacteria in the pots as well, they create gases which the roots of our orchids also can work with, it can happen very quickly that there is a shift of the healthy balance in the pot. The bacteria in a tight squeeze will also enjoy what is going on right next to the decaying matter and start to attack the healthy roots, seeing as they're going to start decaying in a domino effect. In the process of decay, the microorganisms that decompose organic matter in the absence of oxygen because of too many roots in the pot, they produce methane gas during anaerobic digestion, and anaerobic digestion generates a sludge-like substance that is even harder to break down. That sludge-like substance <laughs> seeps into the even tighter areas of the spaces between the roots and cancels out any chance of oxygen exchange in the pot. I have a video on dangerous gases for our orchids and guess what? Methane was one of those pointed out in the video as posing a major threat. While that video mainly addresses the gases that could be in the air, our orchids also produce gases in the pot. I will link that video in the description if you would like to get the deets on what dangers gases pose for our orchids above the surface of the pot and the signs and symptoms these gases will show on our orchids. 
Now, back to if an orchid is pot bound because of too many roots. Flushing a pot that has a pot bound orchid in it will not allow water to drain as freely. It will not flush out the dead decaying material efficiently and a lot of the nasty stays behind. You will see how quickly a pot fills up when an orchid is pot bound and how slowly the water drains out. This is when a pot bound orchid with a healthy root system will start to struggle to maintain a healthy root system. It is a domino effect and the unhealthy actors in the pot will win over the tight spaces faster, resulting in a healthy root system suddenly dying, and I quote, for no reason. I quote those words because we are usually left wondering why a once healthy root system is now decimated to the point of no return. The culture was fantastic. The roots grew so well and vigorously that the bacteria had a great time not being flushed out of the pot. The whole root system went tilt within a matter of days or a week. Suddenly we see structures shriveling because there is no way the orchid is able to take up water and nutrients and suddenly we are left with a root system that was amazing and alive to almost nothing viable left. If you have such an orchid and I find that the fine rooted oncidiums are such candidates or the tight root system of cymbidiums and zygopetalums also make the orchid go from healthy to struggling, then your repot regime has to be on point so as to avoid anything untoward even happening in the first place. In my opinion and personal experience, there's always that fine line of not wanting to disturb an orchid because we know it has a very fussy root system. And let's put zygopetalums into that category. A zygopetalum should have as little root disturbance as possible, so many times we prefer to just up pot and do it quickly without messing with the existing root system too much, myself included. Well, there comes a time when we have to make a conscious decision and build up courage to be more aggressive with the root ball cleanup of a zygote, for example. Caught between a rock and a hard place, we risk setting the orchid back because while the existing root system is being cleaned up, it can just dump all of them when it comes time to put them back in the pot no matter how gentle we were. However, if we do not address the root system on orchids that have delicate roots, we are risking the orchid's well-being anyway because the climate of the pot is going to work against the health of the overall root system. Even if new roots grow into the pot, <laughs> new roots will find a way into a pot even if it's pot bound and the squeeze is going to get even tighter. So you can see eventually there is no room for healthy gas exchange no matter how well we flush. The same goes for vigorous insidiums and other orchid genera that are bred for their vigor like panaricas and cyclias, prostechias and guareceas. Their root systems are a joy to watch grow, but they can quickly become their worst enemy if we are not careful. The stress in the pot with all the bacteria and decayed matter that starts to add up and collect is also a great breeding ground for fungi. The spores of fungi can develop some weird spotting on the leaves, which is another problem that is a potential threat to our orchids. Sometimes I have stood in front of my orchids and have accepted spotting on leaves because of genetics, too much hybridizing going into the orchids, but that is only because I know my repotting schedule and I know that those orchids have plenty of space in their pots for the roots to be fine. However, if you have spotting on leaves, that makes no sense. They should not be there and you have plenty of airflow and your humidity as well as temperatures align as per usual. Check the pot of that orchid. It is possible that it is rock hard and you need to put that orchid on your repot schedule as soon as new roots start to grow. Now this brings me to a subject that we hear a lot. I quote, this orchid likes to be in a small pot. We hear that a lot, especially about dendrobium. So Let's explore that thought from the point of view of the orchid. We humanize our orchids a lot, give them pronouns as we develop a relationship with them, seeing as we can all relate to adjectives like she is fussy or she is a diva or she hates growing roots, is stingy on the root front, etc. Well, we cannot really discern if an orchid likes to be in a small pot, so why does that work with some orchids? Again, no matter the media. Usually an orchid that likes to be in a small pot has fine roots or medium fine roots, so the small pot allows for a quicker wet dry cycle. That has nothing to do with the size of the pot. It's just a way for us to remember that an orchid prefers to not sit in wet media for too long. Imagine though the same orchid in inorganic media in a semi-hydroponic setup. The pots do not have to be small for the orchid to grow roots well, so it's not a question 
question of an orchid liking a small pot, but how secure is the orchid in that pot? You see, normally when an orchid is potted up in a small pot, we secure the orchid into that pot with a lot more attention because it is possible the orchid is top heavy. We know that the root tips of orchids are super delicate and one wrong move or disturbance of the root tip can cause that to stop growing. So securing the orchid well into the pot helps prevent any root tips from getting damaged when the orchid is being handled or possibly from moving around loosely in the pot due to airflow. That was a tangent, but hear me out. If the orchid is potted up in a small pot because of it likes to be pot bound then that pot is going to be hopefully very quickly full of roots then a repot is necessary to ensure the health of the root system which means another disturbance by way of a repot or simple up pot just something to consider when you decide how you want to grow your orchid or orchids the size of the pot should be such that the orchid can remain undisturbed for at least two years or else we will always be back to square one remember also that if you're not growing in a controlled environment you cannot always repot you cannot always refresh the root system of an orchid based on the conditions. So planning ahead and thinking of what your orchid does or doesn't do during a time of year when conditions may not be ideal is also important. Also, a pot-bound orchid will stay wetter for longer during the cooler months of the year. So, it has nothing to do with pot size, but everything to do with how much airflow, gas exchange and space the root system has during this time of year. So while we love a pot full of glorious roots, remember, too much of a good thing is not always the best thing, and we need to stay on top of those orchids to make sure that nothing goes tilt, which results in an orchid becoming a rescue candidate because of root loss. The competition for space should not be the reason why a root system cancels itself out. If you have any questions or thoughts you would like to run by me, the comments section is there for a reason and let's discuss specifics in your case. That is if you have a situation with an orchid that you're not sure about and want a second opinion on. If this is your first time on my channel, I would like to point out that while I'm currently growing my orchids in inorganic media and semi-hydroponics, I have had orchid collections that I grew in organic media using clay pots as well as some orchids in the conventional plastic pot. So please do not be put off by what you see me doing, but know that I have several orchid culture methods under my belt and I can speak on several different environments as well. So enjoy growing healthy, vigorous root systems, but make sure that in doing so, that healthy root system doesn't start to become its own worst enemy. I would so appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up and hey, if you are here for the first time and have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Know that I so appreciate all the support I can get. The fact that you watch the video to the end is a massive support as well. So let me thank you for that right now. And it gives me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day. I ask only one more thing of you though. That is that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.